We good? We got every County Chief of Police, the Metropolitan Police Department. Um, just wanted to uh, to give a community uh, update really on where we are. I'm going to ask everyone to go to the MPD's uh, website. Uh, we just released an, an updated video involving the shooting that occurred uh, last night at 8 uh, 20 here on uh, 14th Street at 14th and Riggs. Uh, we still are on the hunt for the individuals that are responsible uh, for this. And there's an up to a $10,000 reward for anyone who has information related to uh, the shootings that occurred here last night. Uh, I just want to echo my comments. I've been talking to uh, business owners along the way. I've been talking to residents along the way. And people are really mad as hell right now. And I don't blame them. I am too. Uh, that's the reality. And the other reality is, I think that people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. I think that people want to ensure that there is accountability for what's happening in our communities. When these individuals are caught, somebody, please look at those images, look at that vehicle. If you recognize that vehicle or who was operating that vehicle, please call us, 202-727-9099, or text us anonymously to 50411. Uh, I'll end my formal statement at this point and answer any questions that you might have for a minute. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Yeah, what I said to that woman specifically was, she said 14th and Irving, and I said that we had officers there, part of our community focus patrol last night, and they recovered a gun from that individual in that community last night. And what I also said to her is that now it's our responsibility to watch that case. Let's see what happens with that case. Did that case get paper? What happens when it goes to, through the judicial system? How is that individual held accountable for his actions? Our officers were there in the community. Somebody brazenly fired shots in that community. A gun was taken off the street, an illegal firearm was taken off the street there. How do we hold that individual accountable? Chief Next question. Chief, yes, ma'am. were here when the shooting happened last night. They responded very quickly yeah. within five seconds, but the individual shootings don't seem to care. So how does the department handle that? We're going to do what we do. We're going to arrest people. We're going to lock them up. And what I'm asking is that the system, the ecosystem, our justice system, does its part in terms of making sure that these folks are held accountable. I'm asking community members, join with me. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, join with me. My voice is only but one voice. And I've been saying this for a long time. I've been in this city for 30 years. I've been in this, I've been in this city all my life. But I've been in this police department for over 30 years. This is the same movie. This is the same movie that when I was a boy growing up here, the same movie. When are we going to do something different? And what different looks like, what does not happen here is accountability. We're not ready. People are not ready to have that conversation. When I start talking about accountability, people start talking mass incarceration. I'm not talking about mass incarceration. I'm talking about holding people accountable who make our communities unsafe, who make it unsafe for you, for me, and for the people who were out here walking around, who made it unsafe for Naya Courtney over in Ward 8, who made it unsafe for the young man who lost his life over in Ward 7 last night. I'm talking about those individuals who brazenly use illegal firearms in our street. Another firearm recovered last night, 1100 block of S Street, moments before this. When are we going to be sick and tired or sick and tired? These voices need to be echoed beyond this space where I am. People who are responsible for making decisions, hey, call them up, let them know, send them an email, whatever it is. The mayor has supported me in what it is I'm trying to do here. She has said, hey, chief, whatever overtime you need, make sure that you use whatever it is you need. And I appreciate that from the mayor. But here's the thing. That does not solve all problems. The reality is we have a shrinking workforce. I have a definitive amount of resources, 200 and some officers less this year than what I have last year. With that being said, what am I going to do with these resources? I can't work these officers to death. I'm not going to have them out here making bad decisions, getting involved in use of force uh, incidents. We need to make sure that we are a police department, a major city police department in the nation's capital, that we are properly staffed to where it is we need to be. I know that's a long answer, but that's the truth. So you know, right right the police the police helping you? This lady. The White House is right up the block. How is it an issue that you don't have the resources. You don't see this going down where Biden living. You don't see him getting shot at and getting shot Ma'am, I see it I seeing it happen. Ma'am, I see it happening in every place. Ma'am, in our city, we had over 922 people shot last year. That's shocking to the consciousness of most, most people because most people don't see that. I see it every day. 198 people lost their lives in our streets last year. 
I don't, with the White House, it may be close there, but I tell you what, where I see it popping up is where, where we start, start to see pain points for people, where, where it's happening when people can't sit down or walk down the street with their kids, that's when people start to speak up about the issue. All I'm doing is amplifying something that's been happening in this city my entire life. I've been here all my life. I grew up over in Carver Terrace. Everybody over there know who I am. I know who they are, the good, the bad, and the otherwise. And the one thing that I know about this city is if you don't hold people accountable for the things that they do, people will continue to engage in bad behavior. We're not holding people accountable. This gentleman here, then this gentleman here. Yes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This gentleman here, then you, then you. Yes, sir. Chief, are calls to defund the police helping you? I don't think that those calls are helping uh, right now. I mean, those are conversations. I don't fund the police department. Those are conversations that legislators and whoever else, I mean, you can really kind of point that to them. Do you make you mad though? Do you make you mad that people so many of these folks evade detection and arrest? There are cameras on every single building here. How is it not possible to find the license plate to find these people in a more timely manner? Well, a lot of times individuals are operating in stolen cars. The second thing is, it's not a movie. Crimes aren't solved in 60 minutes like we see on the movie. It doesn't happen that way. The car is probably stolen, could, might, might not be, I don't know, it's part of the investigation. The key point is, when we do identify these individuals, let's think about the individuals who we locked up in 2020 during COVID that have not been through a judicial process. Where do you think those individuals are today? They're out in community. They're out in community right now. Individuals who have been locked up for violent crime, individuals who have been locked up with firearms, they're in our communities today. This, hold on, this gentleman here, this gentleman here. Chief Conti, tonight is, and this weekend is supposed to be another beautiful weekend. People want to get out. We saw what happened last weekend. What is your promise to folks out here who want to get out, to, who are scared about going out? I'm asking that un, the people who are in the community, or not asking, but let's let folks know that our police officers will be out here. The resource, every available resource that we have, we're putting out to community, to assist in community, not just with a visible patrol presence, but in addition to that, with the investigation. These cases, they have to be investigated. So our detectives are working hard. We continue to make progress on the cases that we've been dealing with, but I want the community to know that I stand by them, that I'm with them, and I'm asking the community to also be with me on this issue. My voice is one voice, but I'm asking for the community to help amplify what's really happening in our streets. Lou. One last question, Lou. Chief, yes, uh, one of the merchants on the street thinks of last night shooting was a fight between drug dealers. Could you say what the cause was? Lou, I, I wish I knew, but let me, let me, let me tell you something that, I, that I'm seeing since you asked the question about drug dealers. We have taken on a mindset that marijuana is not really, it's not really a big issue in our city. I can tell you that marijuana undoubtedly is connected to violent crimes that we're seeing in our communities. When you have something where people get high reward they can make a lot of money by selling illegal marijuana, and the risk is low. The risk for accountability is very low. That creates a very, 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 very bad situation because those individuals get robbed, those individuals get shot at, those individuals get involved in disputes all across our city. I'm seeing it happen more and more all across our city in all different wards. Last year, we had a murder up in Ward 3, up on Western Avenue, tied to an illegal marijuana pop-up. Here recently, uh, on North Capitol Street, we had a, a, another illegal marijuana place that somebody entered into with guns, duct taped somebody, and put a gun to somebody's head in there. Unlawful marijuana pop-ups, unlawful distribution of marijuana in communities, that is a bad recipe for disaster. And again, think about it. People, what's the risk for people? Is there a prosecution that's gonna happen? Really, is there a prosecution that's gonna happen of a guy with, with marijuana? I've heard some, from, from some community members that say, hey, these guys are keeping scales on them where they're measuring out their marijuana to the T so that the police are not able to lock them up. That's something that we have to look at as a community. I know, again, marijuana, not a big issue, but it's tied to violent crime, some of the violent crime that we're seeing in our city. Thank you all for your questions. Chief, are you 200 cops short or 500 cops short? No, we're a little bit more than 200 cops short. We're right now, we're at this this time last year we were at 3,800. This year we're at 3,584 as of today. Thank you.